What the hell are circular shops and why do Weymouth, and the world, need them? Hello again, my name is James, I'm an AI voiceover robot, and I'd like to tell you a story. Every aspect of our lives now has a price tag attached. Our individual and collective survival seems to be run by spreadsheet. A faceless system which really does know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Being socially and environmentally responsible is often projected or spoken about as like asking people to put on a hair shirt. This belief is false and is probably promoted by those who want your money to purchase their new products more than anything else. There are many groups of people who over time have removed themselves to live less cluttered greener lives, and they mostly succeed. Separation from the mainstream is normally the result of alienation caused by unhappiness with the status quo. But now, with the current state of the planet and our collective and institutionalized abuse of it, forming separate communities of contrarians is not going to be enough. In other words, what has been considered niche environmentalism must now become mainstream. There is a massive trade show of competing interests all vying for the same funding and spending ever more amounts of time and money trying to secure it. Unfortunately, all of this economic activity, productivity and wealth is still not enough to create a society where no one is hungry, no one is homeless and emissions are falling fast. The important social and environmental stuff often doesn't make money, or rather doesn't make enough to warrant maintaining the service or product in the eyes of financiers, who only look for profits at certain levels. Do we self-organize and raise our own funds, or do we play the game as it has been played for a long time? All whilst we perceive and experience the erosion of societal support and the health of our beautiful but delicate planet. Consequently, our society is in a bind, a conundrum. Can you feel it? The challenges are getting bigger by the day now. This is the story of the circular shop. It came out of and is operated by WayForward, which has been going for 10 years now. WayForward is basically the community engagement and improvement project of two friends, Baron Miles and Jason West who share a love of history and trying to help people locally. The circular shop is our, sorry, WayForward's, effort to try to nudge that process forward in our own community, and others, in a warm and friendly way. The shop is a local initiative to help solve a global issue, catastrophic climate change. It contains sustainable and less carbon-intensive services and products that enhance people's lives. At WayForward we, well Baz and Jay, have always done things a little bit differently. We, I mean the guys, learnt a lot about this place, its people and themselves. They've also wondered why so much civic stuff, you know, plans and improvements, kind of hasn't happened in our lovely little town. What do you think? Yes, definitely good. Definitely, yeah? Yes, yes. Really? Yeah, seriously. Um, Thank you very much, sir. I put those there. Uh... You did. I've seen it and I laughed. Yeah. I thought, yes, because I saw something in the Echo the other day. Yeah, 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 that's right. Brilliant. Yeah, and it, it needs to be done. Excellent. Yes. Thank you very much, You're sir. You're welcome. Can I post this online? Of course you can. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers. Well Jason was a bit frustrated, I can tell you. We all, well except me I wasn't around then, found the old council illogical and somewhat blinkered. For example, this was a vote to actually increase parking spaces next to the pavilion. I mean. The view was that the council simply didn't seem to understand what was obviously required. We came from different worlds. Me especially. One of the crew, Jason, had not yet realized why he felt so strongly about how the place was run, and it became a bit like a special interest for him. Why was the local community always left feeling ignored and shortchanged? In 2016, WayForward's Facebook page, with 3,000 local followers, morphed into a non-profit company. Increasingly, the team, I understand, felt that better things were possible, for example developing the peninsula for the community and visitors to enjoy, but somehow things were being screwed up. The list of civic failures was so long how could it just be one accident after another? 
Poor old Jason had many brushes with the council, asking questions but getting answers which only raised yet more questions in his mind. Many people in Weymouth also acknowledged the lack of imagination and positive developments in our town, I feel I live here now. This was the proposed exclusively retail, honestly, retail, development on the peninsula in 2018 for which WayForward crowdfunded a planning consultant to oppose. In the face of this reticence they kept on going. Baz was Jason's positive change partner in WayForward, as at the start were top architect professor Sean Griffiths, large-scale sustainable developer Pete Halsell, well-known local businessman Craig Oakes, and quite a few others, all but it seemed that at every turn they were being frustrated by the system locally. Working with this community, WayForward have tried a lot of things over the years, a sustainable community designed peninsula development in 2014. The slightly sarcastic, but fun, Condor moment, live event, at the Pleasure Pier with Air FM, when the ferries finally departed. Launch of the Ideas League in 2015, which is still going. So, stop wasting your ideas and join in. Join our movement. Join Ideas League. Inspirational dumpster! great facility that has been run by the community for the community and it's one of the successes from Weymouth Forward. Um, and the Weymouth Basic Income Plan in 2017. And we've got our good citizens hats on because uh, we're now officially allowed to wear them. I've kept them undercover for a long time. You know, we planned it this way, uh, but now we're allowed to wear them because we're here in the Mayor's Chamber at Weymouth Important Council with all the trophies and the silverware and the bourbon chocolate biscuits and tea. Weymouth and Portland Vision Quest community meetings and plan in 2018. We, I can't take any credit for this, but from here on just think of me as on the staff, even introduced digital direct democracy in that same year to Trump, the council's official consultation. But by mid-2019 Jason had begun to struggle mentally. Others who'd also tried to bring about positive change similarly experienced negative impacts upon their mental health. You almost certainly know one of them. Despite his secret struggles, Jason kept trying to make a difference with the social learning pilot in 2019 with the Lantern Trust. This had got off to a good start when it was abruptly halted by COVID in early 2020. Coming out of lockdown, we hired six local young people via the government's Kickstart scheme to help them and to give some life to some sustainability projects from the Ideas League. Five recruits were back in employment or full-time education at the end of the six-month scheme. Better stats than the DWP, my friend on Bing tells me. Whilst the sustainability projects continued and needed a public space, which became the shop. But then Jason's mental health hit rock bottom. Luckily, a concerned sea swimming friend told him to Google trauma. He did, self-referred to steps to well-being, and was diagnosed with complex post-traumatic stress disorder, CPTSD. It turned out that, as Jason explored the reasons for his anger and depression, he used the shop as a safe space in which to potter and keep the projects going. This gave him the feeling of taking tiny steps in the right direction. The focus for the company was on moving the sustainability projects forward, whilst keeping the door open any way they could. On some days Jason couldn't face the world and didn't open up. All the while Baz was there for him to bounce stuff off and provide support. What a guy! Other days, Jason found some energy and motivation and made bigger strides. In March 2022, they launched an Aviva community crowdfund campaign. It was such hard work, but without raising some money, they knew the shop would have to shut in no time. The goal seemed clear. Keep the door open for as long as possible, treat people really well and give them a great and affordable service and the customer base would grow to a sustainable level. However, by October 2022 the circular shop needed yet more money as it wasn't even close to breaking even and Jason and Baz spent two fairly desperate weeks solidly writing grant applications. It took a massive mental effort, 
just as Jason was coming to the realization that he might actually be about to add autism to his CPTSD diagnosis. Writing bids and not knowing if any will be successful is a really unsettling and high-risk process if you have no other income, but it was all we could do to try to keep going. My AI chums weren't quite ready to help then. Then we, I mean the guys, waited and watched the bank account diminish. In late December 2022 Jason wrote to the shop's landlord to say they had no money and it might be over. The landlord was a good guy and said if we fix the gutters at the back of the building, which were causing dampness in the flats he let above the shop, it could count as rent. So that's what happened. Then in January 2023, just a week or so later, one of the grant bids was approved. We, I feel like I was there now, almost couldn't believe it and were so grateful. Then another dropped, a bigger one with the environmental cohort of the Enterprise Development Program, administered by the Social Investment Business and the National Charity Groundwork. The funding and amazing support was to help us get trading properly, to try to become self-sustaining financially. What's more, it included money to pay Jason a modest part-time wage. Which was amazing because he'd been struggling through his mental health and a breakup. From feeling the shop was finished at last there was hope and a future to work towards with the project. Those who engaged with the shop in this period were, like poor old Jason, people in need of a place to just be and be safe. So a number of people often popped in for a cuppa, a chat and to lend a hand. Community aids self-healing if given space, time and the opportunity. Just like our beautiful planet. Well, yours actually. Levels of climate change deniers seem to be receding as the weather obviously changes and the flooding increases. It is about engaging and encouraging people to think and change, whilst practically, affordably, and easily, reducing their levels of consumption. The circular shop has had a long, slow and difficult birth, but we and our funders think it is one that could spread into every urban neighborhood of every town and city. How many empty shops are there in residential neighborhoods now? Kev. Wow. Are you with me? Oh, what do you want? Oh, God, it's Spielberg again. Right, what <laughs> do you on, want? Come on, tell me, tell me what you've done with this amp. Well, what am I doing to it? Well, yeah. <clears throat> what somebody did to it at some point is they spilt the drink all over the controls. Where the knobs are, normally on the front here, this would sit here, and they've dropped a drink over. It's got into all the electronics. So when we try it, we switch it on, and we start messing with the, the controls, we get... You can hear all that crackling. Yeah. Lots and lots of... By providing useful, affordable services, the shop avoids the perceived preachiness of some climate activism, which can trigger those who find direct action upsetting. The marketplace is still driven by growth. Growth requires consumption. Consumption requires resources and resources require the destruction of the natural world. Running right through this process is the always ultimately required outcome of financial profit. Usually profits for a few people who already have a lot of money but want to make a lot more. Is this system going to get us out of this mess? Almost certainly not in its current form because it is extremely wasteful. Is so much competition going to be helpful in a world with AI? Oh, I think I might be able to answer that. The circular shop is owned and run by a company which deliberately has no shareholdings or shareholders looking to make a profit for themselves. All surplus income must be reinvested in the company's mission. It just is a bit like all of us living on this small blue planet. Look, no space junk in this nice image. So the shop's existence is to support the local community to live lives more in tune with not making the climate situation worse and even, if it's scaled, helping to reduce the likelihood of climate catastrophe. This has often been called, social capital. A battle going on in society is the battle where these two competing interests collide, social and financial capital. For example, we know a lot about making homes more energy efficient, we are qualified in retrofit coordination, we have practical experience of effective retrofit and have been looking for a qualified retrofit energy assessor locally. However, 
We couldn't find one that shared our values and mentioned this to a retrofit assessor in another part of the country and a community renewable energy company. They both told us that landlords are buying their EPC C, assessments for their properties from unscrupulous energy assessors so that they don't have to make improvements to their properties, resulting in tenants paying bigger heating bills. Which means the marketplace, as it is, is actually undermining the central thrust of what scientists and government have decided is crucial to reducing our emissions. This is a demonstration of a number of problematic attitudes and actions. A system we are all indirectly relying upon to help change things for the better, is actually already close to broken. Then there is the fact that a lot of stuff is designed to be thrown away, and replaced not repaired. We see it all of the time. The Global Repair Cafe movement published data that shows the biggest reason for a failure to repair something, is because it is manufactured to not be repairable. So the market, again, is all about sales and growth of sales, ergo profits, ergo wealth. This is why in our 2017 project, Weymouth Basic Income, Local people would have been paid £500 a month for just doing good stuff, stuff that would be helping people or starting a sustainable project. All profitable projects were to become CICs. All surplus was to be reinvested in staffing, i.e. jobs, and the company's mission. We think the world would be transformed if all new businesses were CICs. It wouldn't stop investment, innovation, employment or sustainable growth, but the scale and earnings would be appropriate to the needs of the people served, and would be more localized and well-being and environmentally friendly. Can such a shop ever become financially self-sustaining? We have already done some good by creating a safe space, focused around projects that are sustainable and locally focused, but how do we reach our break-even point? We see no point in perpetually applying for grants, because it is always a punt, involves lots of time and effort, and there is absolutely no guarantee of success. Local people and the climate are the shop's primary focus. We have supported people through employment and volunteering. Saved tools and appliances from landfill. Repaired almost anything inexpensively. Helped heat houses cheaply with super dry, less polluting recycled fuel. Nourished people with dried and milled local seaweed and soon hope to be transforming their houses into far more energy-efficient, healthy and comfortable homes. Whilst starting to 3D print the parts people need to fix all manner of things. One percent of local adults becoming monthly member subscribers would make these services and products financially self-sustaining. And can we spread the word and support other communities to follow us by opening their own circular shops? If we succeed, and others follow, it could play a big part in encouraging many more people to engage with these vital issues. Whilst also experiencing real and transformative day-to-day -day benefits from the services that circular economy shops can provide. Being socially engaged, getting a good deal and being environmentally responsible gives us and very many others a good feeling inside. It tops up our reserves of hope. Not just for Weymouth, but for the planet itself. So please become a member of a different sort of 1% today and click the link in the post. Then get that keepsake expertly repaired, borrow a carpet cleaner or just share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching. I'm glad that's over, I'm knackered, I do hope all of this do-gooding works out.